Those sentences may not mean much to you, but there's no way NASA or the United States forget what happened on the 27th of January, 1967. We interrupt our normal programming in order to bring you this special report from NBC News. Here is Bill Ryan. Good evening. Astronauts Virgil Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chaffee have been killed in a flash fire during a rehearsal of the countdown and launch of the Apollo flight they were to have made on the 21st of next month. Hello and welcome to Insanity Collection. Today we will be looking at the Apollo 1 disaster, one of the most horrific tragedies in American history. The word Apollo is used to designate all the missions of the Apollo program, which was the third human spaceflight program carried out by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA. The mission of the Apollo program was to land humans on the moon. The program started with Apollo 1, which was originally designated AS-204. AS-204 was to be the first crewed test flight of the Apollo Command and Service Module, or CSM, to Earth's orbit, launched on a Saturn IB rocket. The task of the team was to test launch operations, ground tracking and control facilities, and the performance of the Apollo Saturn launch assembly, and would have lasted up to two weeks, depending on how the spacecraft performed. The CSM of the spacecraft is CSM-012, and it was manufactured by Northern American Aviation, or NAA. The spacecraft contained a Block 1 version that was designed before the Lunar Orbit Rendezvous landing strategy was decided. The Director of Flight Crew Operations, Deke Slayton, selected the first crew that would fly the spacecraft in January 1966. The team included Don F. Isell as the pilot, Virgin I. Grissom as the command pilot, and Edward H. White II as the senior pilot. Later, Don F. Isell injured his shoulder and was required to undergo surgery. NASA then had to replace Don with Roger B. Chaffee. The organization was also trying to make the first Apollo mission a joint space rendezvous with the final mission of Project Gemini. Gemini 12 in November of 1966. Due to some delays, it became impossible and the Apollo mission was rescheduled for the 21st of February 1967. On January 27, 1967, the team decided to carry out a plugs out test, which would be used to determine if the spacecraft would operate nominally on simulated internal power while detached from all umbilicals and cables. The launch simulation occurred on Pad 34. This test was crucial to the launch date, which again had been scheduled for the 21st of February. The launch vehicle and the spacecraft weren't loaded with fuel or cryogenic and all pyrotechnic systems were disabled, so this test was declared to be safe. At 1 p.m., Command Pilot Virgin I. Grissom entered the command module, followed by Pilot Roger B. Chaffee and lastly by Senior Pilot Edward H. White. They were fully pressure suited and were strapped into their seats. The crew hooked up to the spacecraft's oxygen and communication systems. Immediately after they were in the module, Command Pilot Grissom noticed a strange odor in the air circulating through his suit and he compared the odor to that of sour buttermilk. This delayed the simulated countdown as air samples were taken and at the end of the check, the cause of the odor couldn't be determined. The control room resumed the countdown at 2.42 p.m. At 2.45 p.m., the hatch installation began. The hatch comprised of a removable inner hatch which was inside the cabin, a hinged outer hatch that was part of the spacecraft's heat shield, and was an outer hatch that was part of the boost protective cover that covered the command module. The boost hatch cover was latched partially so that cables could run under it to provide simulated internal power to the spacecraft. 
Moments later, a movement was detected by the spacecraft's inertial measurement unit and the astronaut's biomedical sensors. Some sounds from Grissom's stuck-open microphone and some increments in the level of oxygen spacesuit flowed. When the communication problems among the team, the operations and checkout building, and the complex 34 blockhouse control room persisted, Grissom commented, How are we going to get to the moon if we can't talk between two or three buildings? Hey, how are we going to get to the moon if we can't talk between three buildings? I can't hear that thing you said. Jesus Christ. Due to the troubleshooting of the communication issue, the simulation was put on hold again. By 6.20 p.m., the simulated internal power transfer completed. By 6.21 p.m., a surge was observed in the AC bus 2 voltage readings, possibly showing a short-circuit connection. Nobody knew what was going on in the cockpit. A few seconds later, someone is believed to have shouted, Flames! And two seconds after that voice, Edward White said, We have got a fire in the cockpit. According to a report by NASA, it was stated that the first astronaut that shouted the word flame was Roger B. Chaffee. However, some listeners and analysts claimed the voice belonged to Command Pilot Grissom. Within seconds, the fire had spread throughout the cabin. Then another sentence followed, but most listeners couldn't decipher the words. The sentences that are believed to have been said by the astronauts are along the lines of, We've got a bad fire, let's get out. We're burning up. They're fighting a bad fire, let's get out, open her up. Or, I'm reporting a bad fire, I'm getting out. One thing was clear, however. The occupants of the cabin were experiencing a serious inferno attack and the voice transmission ended with a cry of excruciating pain. Some of the officers that were in the blockhouse said that Edward H. White was seen on the television monitors where he was reaching for the release handle of the inner hatch as flames engulfed the cabin from the left to the right side. Due to the exposure of oxygen, the fire became more intense and caused the pressure to rise to about 29 psi. This pressure resulted in the rupture of the command module's inner wall. Flames and gases were seen outside the command module as they came out through open access panels to two levels of the pad service structure. Intense heat, dense smoke, and ineffective gas masks designed for toxic fumes slowed the attempt of the rescue crew that was on the ground. At that moment, there was imminent fear that the command module would soon explode or had maybe even already exploded. The rescue crew was also working on the possibility that the fire might ignite the solid fuel rocket in the launch escape tower above the command module, and if that happened, it would kill all nearby ground personnel and may even destroy the pad. The second phase of the inferno started when the pressure got released while the cabin ruptured and the rush of air increased the spread of the flame across it. The fire moved to the third phase when most of the oxygen was consumed and it was replaced with atmospheric air. This extinguished the fire, however, another thing happened. There was an increase in the concentrations of carbon monoxide, which is dangerous when it gets into the body's system. Carbon monoxide combines with hemoglobin and inhibits the production of oxygen. Heavy smoke filled the cabin and a large amount of soot was deposited on the surfaces as they cooled. It took the pad workers about five minutes to open up all three hatch layers and they could not drop the inner hatch that led to the cabin floor as intended. They just had to push it out of the way to one side. 
They were unable to find the astronauts through the heavy smoke at first, even though the cabin lights were fully working. The bodies were later found, but it was difficult for the rescue crew to retrieve them. The fire had melted the hoses that connected Grissom and White to their life support system. Grissom was found lying on the floor. It was obvious that he had removed his restraints. White was found lying sideways. His restraints were burned, and Chaffee was found strapped into his seat. The retrieval of the bodies took over 80 minutes. The director of flight crew operations, Deke Sladen, was the first NASA officer to check the interior of the spacecraft. An investigation was launched, and according to the Apollo 204 review board, Grissom suffered third-degree burns on over one-third of his body. White also suffered third-degree burns on almost half of his body, and Chaffee suffered third-degree burns over one-quarter of his body. The primary cause of their death was cardiac arrest caused by the high concentrations of carbon monoxide. The ignition source and the level of pure oxygen atmosphere were among the major causes of the accident. After the accident, Gene Krantz, who was later ranked as the number two most popular space hero, delivered a speech to Mission Control in honor of the lives lost during the accident. He said, From this day forward, Flight control will be known by two words, tough and competent. Tough means we are forever accountable for what we do or what we fail to do. We will never again compromise our responsibilities. Every time we walk into mission control, we will know what we stand for. Competent means we will never take anything for granted. We will never be found short in our knowledge and in our skills. Mission control will be perfect. When you leave this meeting today, you will go to your office and the first thing you will do there is to write tough and competent on your blackboards. It will never be erased. Each day when you enter the room, these words will remind you of the price paid by Grissom, White, and Chaffee. These words are the price of admission to the ranks of mission control. The name Apollo 1 was made official by NASA in the crew's honor after the fire, as it was they who chose it. NASA didn't give up after this tragic accident, and they had huge success with the following Apollo programs, even putting the first man on the moon with Apollo 11 in 1969. To our dead heroes, we say that we appreciate their efforts, and may their souls continue to rest in peace. If you enjoyed this video and want more dark and mysterious content, click that menacing little red subscribe button down there and remember to tap that bell icon before it taps you. <laughs> Until next time guys, stay insane.